Hi, I'm Mark Pack, editor of Liberal Democrat Newswire, and uh, gradually getting awake again. So apologies if I take any sips of my coffee during this video. Having done a few videos about what goes on during a general election, I thought I would uh, wrap up the series with a final post-election video. Uh, in terms of what's going to happen in British politics, <laughs> search me, Gov. Uh, who knows whether Theresa May will still be Prime Minister by the time I finish recording this or uploading this or you watch this. Um, but there are a few things it's perhaps worth saying about what happens with Liberal Democrats and Liberal Democrat campaigns after an election. Number one, there's a lot of tidying up to do. Even in a seat that didn't maybe run a very intensive campaign, there's some basic bits of legal paperwork that need sorting, the election expense return and so on, which have got some really important uh, deadlines about them and also some quite severe legal sanctions for failing to meet those deadlines or failing to do the paperwork properly. So for the agent and candidate, that's really crucial. But actually sorting out all the different bits of information, marshalling together, for example, any bits of data that were gathered on polling day or just before polling day, making sure that any leftover leaflets uh, are properly sort of collated, documented, and then safely and environmentally friendly disposed of, really important. That I mention especially because one of the things that's changed in the last few years is the Electoral Commission's guidance on undelivered leaflets. And their guidance is now very explicit that if you don't deliver leaflets, uh, it's OK, you don't have to include them in your election expense return but you do have to be able to prove that you didn't deliver them so there will be over the next few days quite a few people with a rather boring task of going through piles of undelivered leaflets counting up how many there are documenting them with taking photos and making make, making records and so on so there's a lot of different work with helping out agents and candidates just sort out all the admin of the election if you've got a little bit of time once you've recovered seen your family again reacquainted yourself with the family pet and so on if you are able to help an agent or candidate with that I would expect they'll be very grateful secondly there's all sorts of other tidying up in terms of if we had a poster display if we had state board posters in people's gardens etc going around taking those down again if you're able to offer any help to the team that put them up i'm sure they'll be massively grateful to have an extra pair of hands uh, to help remove them whether that's where you live or indeed if you live near a target seat where all of the things that i mentioned will need doing and double or treble treble so the other thing that actually we're quite bad at as a party. I don't think necessarily the Liberal Democrats are particularly bad at, but maybe it's humanity is slightly bad at, is just remembering to say thank you. So firstly, thank you very much to everyone who's been watching these videos. It's been absolutely lovely getting getting so much positive feedback. Thank you to everyone who helped get Liberal Democrat MPs elected in 2015. We got eight MPs. Now we've got 12 MPs. Some really sad, tragic defeats in, in that, some amazing, brilliant wins and four heartbreakingly close losses with Mark in Keridigi and Sarah uh, in, in Richmond Park. Um, and I'm now struggling to remember what the other two really close ones are, Andrew in St Ives and also in, in, in Fife North, North East. So four really close, really close misses. Apologies uh, for not quite remembering them smoothly off the tip of my tongue. I blame the tiredness of not yet having sipped enough of my coffee. Um, and, and those really, really close results are down to so many people having gone to help or made phone calls or made donations or done clerical work remotely and so on in target seats. I think particular praise, particular thanks for those candidates in non-target seats who led teams of helpers to go and help in target seats, especially on polling day. You are absolute stars. And you look at some of the close results in the seats that we did just win. There's no doubt about it. That leading by example, brilliant bit of teamwork was, was a key part in us ending up with 12 MPs and not 11, 10 or down into single figures. Uh, but also, I think we often, you know, don't don't remember always to, to 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 thank enough upwards, as it were, you know, not just thanking thanking volunteers, grassroots activists as well, but thanking the agent, thanking the candidate, thanking the brilliant team at HQ who have done so much, thanking the great volunteers who work behind the scenes on helping sort the party's data and so on. So, if if I could suggest maybe one resolution for you over the next over the next forty eight hours in a month, sort of returning slightly to normal life and catching up on the washing and all that, just try and say thank you to a few people, whoever whoever they are. Um, we, we really don't do it often enough. And thank you once again from myself to everyone who's, who's, who's watching this, who in any way contributed to us getting a 50% increase in the number of our MPs. Not as many as we would have wished, I'm sure, but still up is definitely better, uh, better than down. 
And the final thing to mention, of course, is we need to learn the lessons uh, from this election. It's quite possible there will be another general election in less than five years time if there is a change in Tory party leadership. I think what we what we know and what we sort of half knew before, but what was sort of very clear from earlier this year, that if there's a new party leader who hasn't yet been through a general election, who's in 10 Downing Street, their ability to say to all the other parties, look, come on, let's have a general election. I've not yet had a democratic mandate. It's very hard for other parties to say no to. So who knows when the next general election may be, it might even be later this year, maybe in a in a year, uh, a year or two. But it means, therefore, learning the lessons from this election is really, really important. I'll be writing a bit more about that in the next edition of Liberal Democrat Newswire, which you can sign up to uh, at libdemnewswire.com. Um, and the, the party itself will, I'm sure, be kicking off a feedback and analysis process as well. We've got the first post-election meeting with our federal board uh, on Saturday afternoon, and I'm sure, sure that will be one of the main issues on the agenda. What I would just suggest is, you know, I, th- I think there'll be a lot of discussion to be had is, is quite often in the past, these sorts of feedback and discussion can quite quickly get into sort of relatively unproductive sharing of extremes. So people saying, oh, you know, we must absolutely only do it stuff ever in target seats again, because look how much we eat, just tiny, tiny margins by which we missed on gaining more seats. And then at the other end of the spectrum, we have people saying, oh, targeting's a load of nonsense. It shows just, you know, the results show just how much we need to build up our strength all across the country. And we shouldn't concentrate on target seats at all. And actually, both of those extremes are wrong. And what we need to find is the sensible way of balancing both the benefits of building up target seats, but also the need to build up the rest of the party outside target seats as well. And um, I give that just as one example, but across lots of other points, such as the balance between leaflets and digital campaigning, we often get stuck into these extremes where people make one comment that's right out of the extreme. They call everyone else an idiot and stupid and backward and ignorant. And then we just waste our time and energy on just clearing out the obviously wrong extreme statements rather than really concentrating our time and effort on 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 on, on the more fruitful and the more sensible debate about, well, actually, how do we get the balance between these sorts of things right? So that would be my one suggestion. I'm sure there'll be loads of views. Hopefully, uh, some of the things I've said over the last few weeks, when I look back at them, will turn out to have been sort of uh, fairly sensible comments, which stand the test of the time. I'm sure there'll be things in amongst everything I've said where I, where I or maybe you will look back and think, oh, my goodness, that, that really didn't turn out like that. We definitely need to learn to do things differently. But let's try and do that in a sensible, collective spirit. As I said, I'll be touching on many more of these issues in the next edition of Liberal Democrat Newswire, which will be number 100. Uh, so by all means, please do go if you're not a subscriber yet. It's free. Sign up at libdemnewswire.com. And I hope to talk to you or see you or speak to you soon. Thanks very much as ever for listening.